Indies, 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 indies. Happy Saturday. Super stoked to be here with you for another episode of Corinne's Corner. Please, as always, let me know that you can hear and see me okay so that I know that we're ready to dive in. I'm super stoked um, to be going over, there's, now that the, we're in the heat of this, right, there's more and more things that I can share with you, whereas in the beginning, we were talking in a lot of hypotheticals, <laughs> right? So, um, now we kind of get into the nitty gritty of what is actually happening in these various ads and, you know, seeing how stuff is actually happening. So if you got the email uh, about this, you'll know that we're going into some Twitter and Snapchat ads that I've been running, which I know I kind of uh, showed you Snapchat last week a little bit. My TuneSpeak campaign launched a week and a day ago, and I did some work in my IG grid, which is something that we haven't really touched on since the beginning of this series. I made some website changes and I'm actually really excited about my messenger bot uh, points campaign. So um, if you're an Indie Pro member, you'll know that in the uh, ground reports section of the Indie Pro area, there's actually um, a, a little bit about um, Messenger. I think I actually, I shared Location Grabber. And I don't know if I shared my points idea, but some things have changed since then. So uh, ManyChat incorporated a couple tools for this that, uh, you know, I can easily uh, do this a little bit easier than I was doing it. So if I didn't share it before, it's because it was too complicated <laughs> to be replicable. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. It looks like Jeffrey's here. Eric is here. Tom's here. Thank you so much. Josh Preston is here. Hello, hello, hello. So um, I'm excited to dive in, guys. We've got a lot to cover in this, uh, in this run. So I'm going to hurry up and share my screen so we can get started. Um, just a, you know, a call to action for you here. If you have questions, uh, please feel free. I've got comments up. I am watching everything to make sure that if you have questions about something in particular that I'm covering, uh, that I address them, right? So that um, I can fly through it. But if you're ever like, wait, I want to see more, you can, uh, you can flag me. So, my screen, my screen, my screen. So first, oh, that was weird. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my screen share, guys. I don't know how that happened. Um, but I'm gonna fix it. <laughs> Jeez. All right. How does this happen, folks? When you're live, that is when things happen and that's always super fun all right bear with me I'm fixing this um okay so I think we're good except that my screen share does not actually have screen share anymore so give me a sec okay there we go we're good we're good we're good <laughs> the fun of being live Am I right? Okay, so I want to dig into Twitter ads first uh, because that's obviously something. Now, you can see that I've run things in the past, right? Um, and a lot of the times I shut them off before anything happens because it's just like, like this isn't working. Twitter ads are a little bit awkward. Um, you can definitely, there is a Twitter pixel on my site um, and if you you know when you get enough traffic you can kind of spot check those people anybody who has a Twitter account and happens to be signed in it at the same time and is then um, on your site obviously it creates an audience but Twitter is a little bit has become a little bit niche right and Twitter is actually a place where I really um, interacted with a lot of fans in the past so I've been on Twitter since 2008 I have an audience there I love chatting with people there because um, you can have, you know, really cool conversations and tag each other. And now the threads have developed a lot in Twitter. 
So I dig it. Um, but I was like, well, you know what? Maybe I'll put some cash on this TuneSpeak promo since it launched last week. Now you can see that this campaign did not start until yesterday. Um, it did take a little bit longer to get approved than I was anticipating, uh, which is fine. This TuneSpeak campaign is going to run for seven months, right? So there's nothing barring, you know, th this is not a problem. But if you do ever decide to run Twitter ads, um, this is something that you might want to know. So basically, you can see that I'm getting, um, you know, decent impressions. Uh, the click-through rate on this is actually pretty good, uh, about 2.82%, which is a little bit higher than I've seen in, you know, some of these other campaigns. Now, what I'm targeting in this ad is not any warm audience because I wanted to test, right? We're testing the things. Welcome, Marvin. Thanks for heading in. Um, don't worry about being late. You can always catch up. <laughs> so, um, so what I am targeting is actually, um, and I actually want to see um, if it lets me kind of identify who these people are. Um, yeah, it doesn't, that's not letting me show you. So hold on. Let me see if I can actually find it. Okay. Um, all right. So you can see here that what I've essentially done right now, the TuneSpeak campaign is only able to run in the United States, United Kingdom, and Canada. I think I may have mentioned this last week. I have a lot of fans in Germany, Australia, New Zealand, uh, Norway. And unfortunately, it's just with the, um, the tax paperwork, right? Because I am offering prizes worth a total more than $600. Um, so it just gets to be kind of convoluted when they add um, a lot of different countries. So that's kind of a, you know, it, I didn't know that before I launched it. So that's good to know now. <laughs> so, but by the time I, you know, got into um, this campaign, I already knew. So you can see the click rate is a lot higher in the United States and in Canada um, and a little bit lower in the UK, which is, you know, totally fine. United States is really kind of my primary here. Um, and so I've spent, you know, a, a, not a whole lot of money just yet, but my cost per click, this is a little bit high, right? So, um, it's not terrible, right? Um, uh, I, you know, especially for a cold traffic campaign, uh, if it were warm, I think it would probably be half this, uh, but I wanted to, um, do some testing. Now, when you set up a Twitter campaign, you can target people who are already follow you. Um, and I've got about, I think 13,000 something on Twitter right now. Um, actually, why don't we just look? Do, 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 do. Okay, I've got almost 14,000 followers. So um, I did, uh, I haven't run to them yet because I want to see how this does with cold traffic and then move it into warm traffic. So, um, so that's the deal right now. So essentially, you know, this is the tweet that I am um, advertising. Now, one thing to consider is that social proof does not uh, necessarily, um, oh wait, actually that's not what I'm this is the one. <laughs> this is a retweet of TuneSpeak announcing the campaign. This is my tweet um, sending them to TuneSpeak. So you can see that there's only a few likes and retweets on this. Um, this is not uh, social stacking, right? So even though it's using the creative of that tweet, um, it is not necessarily stacking any kind of likes or retweets on it. So that's kind of a drag. So um, what I did do is I targeted certain, um, basically I, I tracked women, uh, you know, women kind of rock who have brightly colored hair because it's a cultural thing, right? So, um, Paramore is obviously linked with Haley Williams who doesn't have brightly colored hair right now, but she's well known for it. The last 15 years she's had brightly colored hair. Um, Icon for Hire is actually a band that I worked with, um, and their singer has had pink hair for the length of their car their career. Um, New Year's Day is also, you know, kind of alternative rock, and their singer has had, you know, red on one side, black on the other. She's done a lot of creative things with hair. And Lights, who um, I actually knew 
back in New York, like when she was teeny tiny. Um, and she's got, a, I think she has like orangey red hair right now. But in any case, these are all um, kind of vibes, women who are in a similar vibe to the music that I do now. So I targeted them. And this doesn't necessarily mean that it's targeting followers of these people, though some of them obviously will cross over. It's targeting people who are similar to the follower avatar of these people. So there's not necessarily, um, you know, a direct link. I'm not necessarily advertising directly to the folks of, you know, in these, um, these groups. It's just, you know, uh, kind of what's working. So you can see that. Um, even though the click rate is a little bit higher for the, you know, exclusively Haley Williams um, and the cost per click is a little bit lower, um, it's still feeding more of the budget to the Paramore followers. And that's probably because there's more followers on that account, right? And so like Icon for Hire, for example, has the lowest number of followers um, of those. And then, you know, so they're kind of going in order as expected in relation to the number of followers that are on these accounts. Um, so I did um, target these three countries, as I said, and then I closed the ages a little bit. Um, I just didn't go for, um, actually, maybe I didn't close these. I don't think I did. I think I left the ages wide open. Um, or wait, let's see. So target, yeah, so target, I only targeted 13 to 34. And partially, that's because the um, the prizes for the top two are custom Vans slip-ons. So there's a very particular kind of demographic, you know, um, that I, I don't see a lot of 50-year-olds wearing Vans slip-ons, you know, especially with like crazy colors and stuff, which is what I'm going to be getting. But um, nonetheless, you can see that it also reached plenty of people who are outside of that age range, right? And I kind of like that because with Facebook, um, you have to click like expand audience to get anybody into the ad set that um, you, d you know, didn't target specifically, but it also like messes with the interests, right? Whereas in Twitter's case, um, that's not necessarily true. You can just open up the ages, right? Um, and plus, anybody who retweets this content or shares any of it um, on Twitter or tweets about it may see that content. And so that's where these people um, populate from. So yeah, so this is, I mean, it's going well. The frustrating thing is that I obviously cannot track what's happening. Um, again, like in Corinne's Corner, I'm testing a bunch of stuff that I wouldn't necessarily recommend. <laughs> so don't go do this because you're like, oh, Corinne did it. It must be great. Um, I am just testing things. So yeah, I put about a $250 budget on this. Um, I think it's serving at most uh, $10 a day or $25 a day, something like that. Um, and that's just budget that I put aside for the TuneSpeak campaign. As soon as it launched, I was like, okay, I'm going to put, when I announce, I'm going to put this chunk on Twitter, this chunk on Snapchat, this chunk on Facebook and IG, which is most of it, and this chunk on Google display ads retargeting. So uh, basically people who have been on my site and then sending them to this campaign. So, um, and Google ads are, they're great for e but they can be really tough if you're trying to send uh, people to an outside source. And TuneSpeak only offers Facebook Pixel integration. They don't offer Google Analytics. So again, it would be another thing that I wouldn't be able to track. So I'm trying to minimize that, right? So yeah, so that's what's happening right now. Um, obviously, you can see here like the lookalikes, right? There's the default lookalike. And essentially, like I said, these are the handles that I'm targeting, but what it's actually targeting is the lookalikes of those followers, right? So that is what's falling into this default. You can see that that's where all my clicks are coming from and that it hasn't even found cause to spend any money on the expanded lookalike of these, you know. So I did not, um, you know, segment genders, languages, platforms, um, interests, anything like that. I just went for these handles. So I am planning on letting this run and then maybe in a few months allowing for... Um, Thank you. 
I had a sandwich brought to me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I am planning on, you know, kind of letting this just run its course for the initial budget and then moving it over, um, you know, waiting a few months. And then instead of doing these bands um, or these particular handles, actually moving more into interest just so I can test them and see if the costs are lower and what's happening there. So, but so far it seems to be going well. Um, I did see kind of a rise when I started promoting this on Twitter um, in enrollments in TuneSpeak. So that's been kind of cool. Um, so Eric asked, so you're using TuneSpeak for Twitter ads. Doesn't Twitter have its own platform? So let me clarify, Erica. I am not using TuneSpeak for ads, um, and I typically don't use third-party ad integrations, and partially because I know Business Manager well enough where I feel very comfortable building everything there, um, but also because they usually suck. <laughs> like, usually when it's when MailChimp is like, yeah, we'll run ads for you, I'm like, that's okay. I know how to run ads. Like, Thanks, but no thanks. Um, typically, in many chat, we'll also offer to run ads for you. Um, I just don't find that I can actually tweak the campaigns and, you know, make them as efficient and effective as I could if I were just doing it myself. So this is actually in the Twitter ads platform. It's just running to the TuneSpeak campaign. So um, just to clarify on that. So yeah, so that's been going, you know, fine. Um, I'm I'm running obviously for clicks. Um, if you want to take a, I can kind of show you if I were to build. Oops, that's not what I want to do. Um, if if you want to create a campaign, it's shockingly similar. Like they've obviously been like, okay, people are used to using Facebook ads, and like we need to get kind of similar, right? Um, the thing that Twitter does allow you to do is target for followers, which I have not tested that. I don't know if I want to test that. I kind of feel like that might be a bad idea. <laughs> um, oh yeah, yeah. Facebook allows you to advertise for page likes, which we all know are worthless, really, when it boils down to it. Um, it typically brings in a lot of bad traffic. It's just not a strong place to actually grow. Um, so I don't do that. So the, the campaign I'm running right now is website clicks. I do plan on trying out video views because similarly to what we, um, you know, preach about fan finder videos, video views are proven to be one of the most productive types of campaigns for music discovery, right? So that's essentially um, something that I really want to try. Now, if I was doing um, kind of a retargeting for my website audience that was built on Twitter uh, or on the Twitter pixel, I would use, I would probably use reach um, just because that audience is pretty small. I don't have millions of people on my site. So, um, and, and I think that's something that indies struggle with in the uh, Facebook ads platform as well is that reach is, you know, it's difficult. Um, it doesn't really get the conversions. And then sometimes uh, reach will actually just not fire at all because if you run it at too low a budget, your audience is too expensive and it'll just sit at zero dollars the whole time. So, um, so, but we'll, we'll see about that, right? I'm going to take a look. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are the different things. Obviously app re-engagements isn't something, um, I am looking at possibly launching an app, um, around the, the, uh, greatest hits cycle or maybe for the next album. Um, but for now it's not, you know, something that's relevant. So, um, pre I'm really interested to see how video views works with Twitter. Um, I kind of feel like, I don't think there's a ton of like video consumption on Twitter, but I could be totally wrong. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm interested to try it out and see. Um, so let's say that I am um, going to build this video views, right? Um, and this is not like a mini training on Twitter. I just kind of want to show you what, you know, the examples are of how this works. Um, I'm, I'm not recommending that you go <clears throat> run Twitter ads based on what I'm showing you right now because there are intricacies to it. <laughs> so, um, all right, I'm just going to name this. All right, and I'm not going to send any of these things. So 
I'm going to go to next. Now, this is how the targeting works, and it's a lot uh, less fine-tuned than Facebook, right? So, um, you know, that's a thing. So you can target people based on, um, you know, different things in these, like flexible audience targeting is actually your Twitter audiences. I currently do not have any Twitter audiences. I, I haven't uploaded my mailing list. I haven't uploaded anything like that. And my website doesn't have enough traffic associated with Twitter accounts to retarget people on my site. So, um, and that's, you know, that's just how it is right now. So um, I'm not worried about that. Um, and then you can like target similar people. So, but you're typically going to want to go with um, tailored audiences. It's just the widest, most effective kind of audiences. Obviously, you can set your age range. You can set your locations here. Um, I, you know, you can, what's kind of cool is that if you want to target certain OS users, right? Um, it, the thing is, though, it doesn't allow you to like try to target Spotify users, but if you're trying to run Apple Music, like, you know, you could go with OS, you know, iOS devices or whatever. So there isn't really that kind of, of targeting. Now, you could target followers of Spotify, but I use Spotify every day and I don't follow Spotify. So, of course, we can't always just use our own, um, you know, our, our own, like, behavior as like a call for what everyone's behavior is like well I do this and I don't do that so clearly no one does like obviously we can't make that kind of judgment call but um it's it is something where I just you know I'm like well I don't know I could see why a lot of people don't follow Twitter or don't follow Spotify on Twitter so obviously you can, you know, put in all of these things up here, change your locations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this is where you start getting into certain kinds of um, conversation topics, right? Or interests, events, things like that. And then there's follower lookalikes, which I would recommend. That's the closest match to what we do in FanFinder, right? Where we are using essentially the artists that we feel like we sound like or our fans look like. And then, you know, targeting fans of that person. So this would be the same thing. I do kind of feel like this might be a little bit more accurate because you can really, you could target anybody, right? Uh, well, I think so. Let me find someone that I follow um, that has like a small following. Um, so, okay. Yeah, this is just a ton of people retweeting um, their various stuff. Okay. So this person has 63 followers. So let's test this. Um, not to put this person on blast. I don't know them. <laughs> I just know that they've signed up for the TuneSpeak contest. See, and I can totally target that person, right? Target followers that look like their followers. Now think about this in the same way that you think about Facebook lookalikes, right? If this person only has 63 followers, it's very difficult for any machine to figure out who their followers look like versus if you had a thousand people, if you had a million people, right? So you're probably not going to want to do that, but it just goes to show that in Facebook where we are not able to select specific bands or certain music, we can do that in Twitter because we can literally advertise to a lookalike of their followers. So it's a little bit more productive as far as that's concerned. So anyway, um, there's not really a whole lot others that are different, you know, other features that are that different. It's more limited in the targeting, except for the fact that you can target specific people. However, like I'm still going to test it, right? There's a lot of things that I have to test with this. So I don't know about it. You know, so far I've spent $35 and I've gotten, you know, 131 clicks. So that's not terrible right? I'm not too mad about that. Um, so that's what's been going on as far as Twitter ads are concerned. Now, I showed you guys the TuneSpeak, uh, TuneSpeak business last week. And so as you can see, we, you know, we've gotten a lot out of it so far. Um, there's 209 enrollments, but I got 131 mailing list subscriptions. I just imported those subscribers this morning and 112 of them were not already on my mailing list, which is tight. 
Um, I also made sure in the email, um, I'll show you the email in a minute. I'm going to check on the comments real quick just to make sure. Um, Uncoupling Music says, want to try with my new music video? It's short, 1.30. <laughs> Let's test on me. <laughs> I'm testing on me. So I'm not ready to test on anyone else just yet. But you can test on you if you want. Uh, Marcus says, does Instagram have anything like this on a computer? Um, so Marcus, Instagram ads are actually run, um, Instagram is owned by Facebook now. Facebook bought Instagram a few years ago. So you can run ads in Facebook Manager specifically for Instagram if you want. Um, and those run very similar to uh, Facebook ads, the way that you set them up. Um, you just, there's a little bit of difference in the media, right? Um, obviously IG stories is more prevalent than Facebook stories, but that media is 916, uh, vertical and, um, there's some limitations on video length, right? So shorter videos, I think it's two minute limit, um, for like newsfeed type Instagram and 45 seconds for IG stories. So, um, but otherwise they're, you know, the way that you target and the way that you set up the ads are completely the same. So you just select the different placements. So, um, I'm going to actually real quick pull up, um, the email that I sent and it's nothing like groundbreaking. There's nothing in my email that in this email in particular that is, um, like, you know, like, Ooh, I can't believe she did that. Right. But I just want to, I'm here sharing the things. So let me find that real quick and pull it up. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so um, I exported and actually there's 131 now, but I think at the time that they sent me the list, because I told you they have to send them to me manually, they don't zap or automate in any way. So um, when they sent it to me, I think it was more like 120 or something like that. Um, and that's likely because my fans know they're already opted in to my mailing list because, <laughs> you know, that's where they went to sign up. So that's not weird. Um, all right. Let me pull up the email. Talking and working is super exciting. <laughs> All right, so this is basically what I sent out. Um, and it says, hey, uh, thanks for opting into my mailing list. Um, I'm always finding ways to get free stuff into my fans' hands. And then I said, you know, this basically I pointed them to my Campbell Core points, which that's what I'm going to be showing you in many chat in a little bit here. Um, and it says, welcome to the family. And then it says, you know, if you just signed up because you're into the TuneSpeak prizes, no worries. You can unsubscribe with a simple click below. I don't want to send you unwanted emails any more than you don't, uh, any more than you want to be getting them. So this is, and you know, some people will be like, man, you're asking people to unsubscribe in the very first email you send them because this is only going out to people who opted in, who signed up after a certain date, right? Um, and that was just to make sure that I didn't email my list that went over there to sign up you know, with something that, that was like, welcome. And I'm like, I've been here, you know? So, um, but I am, I am assertive about that because I understand that because I'm giving away prizes, I'm giving away a hundred dollar Amazon card. There are going to be people who sign up for this contest who give no cares about what I'm doing, right? They just want that, um, that prize. So this way I could just make sure that, I'm keeping my list clean, right? Which is what I, you guys know, I always preach, <laughs> which is, uh, you know, keep that list clean. If they love you, they'll come back. If they don't love you, let them go, right? Um, it's just not worth paying for and spamming them and feeling like, you know, you've got cruddy open and click rates in your mailing list. So anyway, that's what that is. Now, this button here goes to a landing page on my site where it kind of explains a little bit more about what CC points is. And then they click start here and it opens up in messenger. Um, I'm not going to continue with that because I don't need to sign up for myself, but that's essentially what happens there. So, um, but back to TuneSpeak, right? This has been going 
well, right? I haven't done a lot of promotion on it. So, you know, I, I don't think that it's like crazy, but I am seeing, you know, if you look at this, like, you know, 63% of the people who visit the site are enrolling. And that's considering that I've sent people there um, on that short list of my mailing list who, because I didn't know, they are um, in Germany or New Zealand or Norway, right? So there are going to be people who, or, you know, from my IG post or from my Facebook post or from my Twitter post, right? There's going to be people who come here and then the system's going to tell them you can't sign up because this is for US, UK, Canada only. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, so I'm not bummed about that. At 63%, you know, if you think about this too, in comparison to like an opt-in campaign uh, that we run, you know, on warm traffic for indies, you know, 60% would be a very strong conversion rate for that landing page, right? So I'm not mad about that. Um, and then if you look at the mailing list subscriptions from there, there's another 63% is actually almost completely linear. 63% of those people signed up for the mailing list, which to me is the most valuable thing, right? Something else that was interesting and kind of surprised me is that there were two individuals the very day that this launched who purchased my pay what you want gilded um, offer, which, you know, one of the benefit or one of the points things in this contest is this 124 link clicks we have right here. And all that is is just going to my site. If I go to my site, um, I entered, I put this enter to win button because um, I wanted to be able to advertise on IG. And so it's like link in bio, right? Um, and so, you know, I'm like, you can enter to win, just go to my website, right? That way I don't have to come up with these short links and have some crazy process going on. So, but at the very top is this banner where they can pay what you want for Gilded. And that's actually converted to sales just organically. So that's tight. I'm not mad at that. One person paid $1 and the other person paid $20 <laughs> plus $5 of shipping. So, you know, it goes to show though, I would never have sold Gilded for $20. You know what I mean? So, um, so, you know, that worked out really well. And I put all kinds of goodies in the package for that person. Cause I'm like, well, and I put goodies in the package for the $1 person too. But, um, so both of those people actually opted in through TuneSpeak and then, um, you know, they bought, which is great. I'm not mad about that. So I got over 100 follows on Spotify from that. Um, I've got, you know, a bunch of more YouTube subscriptions and Twitter follows, Spotify um, follows, which this is a, you know, best of Corinne Campbell playlist, right? Um, and, you know, a bunch of other stuff in here. So I'm not mad about it. It's, I wouldn't say that it's, like crazy amazing, right? I paid $500 for this campaign. So if we're doing the math, you know, I'm paying under $5 per opt-in, which that's expensive. Um, and I never pay that much for an opt-in, but this is going for seven months, right? So by the time we get to the end, I'll probably, in addition to getting all of this social proof all over the place and getting their emails and everything else that comes after that, you know, I'll probably pay a reasonable cost per opt-in for this campaign and, um, you know, convert that many more people. So I'm pretty stoked. In fact, my um, messenger is emailing or is messaging me. Um, there are four people that have now signed up for the Gilded experience from that TuneSpeak campaign because <laughs> I have my many chat bot rigged up to message me when people do that. So, um so that's not terrible. I mean, they're already on the mailing list, but now they're getting into the Gilded experience and, you know, getting to know the brand and getting to know my music better. And so all of that's good stuff, right? So yeah, this has created a lot of really cool growth. A lot of it isn't like KPI trackable. My Facebook pixel is on, um, on the landing page. Uh, so, you know, I can kind of track for landing page views when I'm advertising, stuff like that. Um, but there's been a lot of just general buzz happening, which is good. So there's also this contestants tab. And this is a basically a dashboard that TuneSpeak sends to you when you have a contest on their platform. So you can see that contestants are spread out all over the place. But I was really surprised by um, these percentages, right? 
And I don't know if it's because like 13 to 20 year olds are like more um, leery of, of giveaways or what that is. Um, but obviously I've got a lot happening in um, the 21 to 50 plus ranges. Um, I'm not mad about it. You know, both of the people who purchased an album were in these top two. Um, so, you know, it's, it's not terrible. Um, and, you know, you can see here, like it tells you all of these people, um, there are like where you see forbidden, those are people who, um, are, you know, tunes because determined are abusers of the system, right? Like sign up for everything and, um, aren't really like not engaged in this campaign in a real way or, they can tell that it's a bot thing, right? So there's some some ways that they're kind of saving you from, you know, getting bogus uh, bogus signups. So that's pretty cool. So that is the TuneSpeak biz. Now I went and I think I told you guys about my um, IG grid, which let me pull that up quick. Isn't it funny how I'm like, let me pull that up quick I say quick every time as if like you're gonna leave if I don't say that I'm gonna do it fast don't worry about it <laughs> so all right it's loading it's maybe not that quick <laughs> all right so I showed you guys this before um this is the promotion grid right and things are slowly being populated in here um, and if you go to my IG, you'll you'll see this as well um, because I didn't actually populate a couple of the things in here. Um, but so this is the release cycle that we're in right now is pieces. Um, these both came out on May 15th. So um, right now these are populating. Now what I realized, I posted this one and then I got stuck. And I got stuck because I was like, oh, I need to make content for this. Like, what am I going to post? What's going to be... And so I got a little bit snagged and then the next thing I knew pieces was out and I didn't have this up and I'm like, okay, I need to get better about this. So um, what I ended up doing was creating just some talking head videos for this. So let me pull up my IG real quick. <laughs> All right. So here's my IG and you can see like that's where I got stuck, right? So then I made this one. Um, and so what I did, I just shot this video and oops, I need the sound off. Um, this was nothing special. I was basically just talking about how I was tired because I was on founder calls and business calls all day. And then I did a little feature with my cat. <laughs> saying that I was going to go home and hang out with my cat. So I put a little screenshot of her in there. And then on this one um, is actually the TuneSpeak announcement. And so I realized that what I could do was literally take like the block from here and then put, um, you know, simple videos into Premiere and mask them so that they just covered this portion of it. Um, which, you know, that once I figured out like, okay, I can still work within this without it all being like super complex, you know, portraits and, you know, uh, more photos like this, right. A little bit more reality. <laughs> uh, once I figured that out, I was actually pretty stoked on it because I was like, okay, I know how to do this. So, um, and this has been pretty good. This is obviously like, if you look at the views difference between this and this, right? This is 655 and then this is 2600 views, right? So, and then I decided I wanted to continue being creative. And once I, I realized that I wanted to kind of overlay these lyrics. So I went to, I think it's called calligrapher.com. Um, let me find it. Yeah, calligrapher.com. So, so it's calligrapher <laughs> without an E. Uh, but basically, and there's a million places you can do this. This is just the one that I wanted to, you know, I used, but there's a million. And this basically allows you, you just fill out, it sends you a PDF 
and it's got all of your, um, you know, a grid, which actually I can show you because I'm a crazy artist who just fills my desk with crap and never cleans it up. So there's this, um, I need to see that you can see me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just go over here. So basically it's like this, right? It puts the characters on there, you fill it out, you scan it in and it makes a font for you. So um, that's what I did. And so when I pulled that into here, I was actually pretty, surprised at how well it really looks like my handwriting I thought it might look like repetitive or like not real um, but it actually it does it looks it looks real it looks good you know so um, I put that in there and now these grids are just going to show little pieces at a time um, and actually while I'm in here I want them to overlap as much as possible um, so I'm actually going to tweak this a little bit and rotate it so that it crosses into as many different you know I want it to be obviously not just um, oh, I don't like that angle either let's just do some Photoshop work while I'm here I think it'll I'm actually gonna experiment with this particular block um, obviously I've got a lot of different ones happening there but I want to see what happens if I overlap this like how easy it is to insert the video or photo that I'm using if it's a photo it's super easy because I can just drop it and then put this layer on top of it if it's a video I might end up being a little challenged there just in my video editing skills I suppose I could export this as a layer anyway so there's that um, so essentially that is what I've been kind of putting together um, so that, you know, this grid is starting to look good. And then what I did is I dropped this. Um, this is actually a video and it plays the audio. So the very first frame of the video is clean and looks like it blends with everything else. But then you can see that I've got this like kind of VCR, VHS kind of effect on it. Um, and it plays the actual song. So that is one way that I was like, you know, cover art is so boring when you post it on IG, nobody cares. Um, and so, you know, I figured if I added, if it was a video, like obviously that place is better in, you know, the machine learning and it gives people a way to experience something more than just a, you know, cover photo of the art. So anyway, um, so yeah, the next couple coming in will be the credits, which I've really enjoyed putting credits on. Um, I don't know if I showed you guys this last time, but basically I took this texture and made, um, you know, a, a credits graphic. And I really like doing that because we don't really have, except for people that buy CDs, we don't really have an opportunity to share the people who have worked on our stuff. Um, and my you know, my team was really great. And so I tagged everybody in here who had IG. Um, and I'm just really happy about, you know, sharing that stuff. So that's what's going to come next. So the next two graphics are super duper easy. It's just the two, it's the credits and the cover. And then I've got another, um, another three posts that I need to like do something creative for. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Uncle Music says cats are always good. I know, right? So, <laughs> um, I'm, you know, fortunately, since I'm obsessed with my cat, it's super easy for me to come up with, you know, internet cat things that people like. So she's great for that. Um, and you know, she's my best friend, but you know, she's also good on, on the internet. <laughs> um, Uncle Music says any length video for Twitter, any limit there, a few words about video that would best to try for Twitter advertising. I have no idea. I have not tested it. Um, I'm sure Google knows, and I won't Google it right now, but I'm sure if you Google it, you'll be able to find out. Um, so yeah, so that's what's been going on with the IG grid, and I've actually been super stoked on it. Um, I'll show you guys real quick. I'm probably gonna, um, oh my gosh, now I'm noticing how often I say real quick, and that is obnoxious. <laughs> I'm super aware of it. <laughs> Um, can we quit this please? Thank you. Okay. 
So, bye. Don't worry, guys. It's just my partner, TJ. I'm not, um, I don't have rando people that I, I quarantine with him, so it's safe. So I just wanted you guys to know that. Um, Premiere is opening, but I'll show you guys that in a sec, just how easy this was. And if, you know, if you're freaked out by video like I am, you might be like, I'm not opening Premiere. But um, it was actually super duper easy to put this together. So, um, oh my gosh, why does it look crazy? What are you doing to me? Okay, Premiere, got confused. That's fine. It's like mad that I'm dragging it to another window. You can do this. I believe in you. All right. So essentially, all I did, um, this like photo or this VHS thing is just an overlay. And it's set to screen, right? So it's just an overlay. And like if I hide everything else, you can see like it just looks like that, right? And this one looks like that. It's just this like green. So that was super easy. All I had to do was bring it in and, you know, adjust the blending mode and the opacity. So that was cool. Um, if I take those away, this is just the, oops, I'm going to hide the layer. Um, this is just the cover art. This is the static version, right? So um, I kind of worked in the effect, right? So the first one is clean. And then you can see it start to come in within the first second. Um, and then I put the music. I took a, a one minute snippet of the song and put that in there and literally bounced it out. Super easy. Um, for the video ones, it was similarly easy. Um, right. So basically, I, I brought in the video that I recorded and set a mask on it and you can kind of see that this is the mask right so I just set a mask for the square and then that was it so don't be too intimidated um, when you start looking at video stuff because I know I have always freaked out about trying to do video stuff and once I actually got into Premiere and I followed a couple of YouTube tutorials I was like I got this I got this for what I need it for right? So that was tight. I was happy about that. So um, a couple of things that I've been working on on my site um, is just, I think I showed this to you guys already, but I've obviously got this, you know, in this order. Um, oh, really? Like I, I guess all I did was install this enter win button since the last time I talked to you guys about it. I'm pretty sure that's it. Maybe I didn't do that much work on my website this week. Whoopsie. <laughs> um, I did do some work on my membership stuff because they kind of changed the, the way that you do the plugins. So for my membership pages, I guess I didn't have this like menu the last time I showed you guys my site. But... Um, let me find the login page. This was showing up super weird. Um, I think I showed you guys that last time where it was like, log in with your account. And it was like going over the button. Um, so the way that MemberSpace does this is, um, let me pull it up. Okay. Yeah, so the way that MemberSpace does this, this is new, right? You used to have to pretty much CSS this yourself. You could set like some colors, but, or they had like copy paste stuff, but it was complex. So this is a lot easier now. Um, and, you know, you can see here it says log into your account. Um, I was able to, to actually fix that with some of the settings. But um, what I realized is that when I had it embedded, it said this little powered by member space thing here. And listen, I like member space, okay? But I don't want someone else's brand on my site. 
So I was getting into the code of it and I could not hide it for the life of me. It was so frustrating. So what I was able to do, um, I basically figured out what that block was and I'll show you guys that. Um, what is this page? Okay. All right, so essentially I was like, what is this little thing? And it's not um, showing it at the moment because it's teeny, but essentially if you press on a Mac, it's option command C, um, you, you can find like these, what little piece of it it is, right? And so what I found was this modal wrapper and it took me a hot minute, like an hour to figure out um, how they had this coded because it was actually inside the the div for what was being um, presented. So you can see like right now it's highlighted over div dot powered by. So that was the class, um, but it wouldn't allow me to hide the target, which was really my problem. It wouldn't allow me to hide this class. The script was overriding it, um, and you can see here. Um, it, we, I really was struggling with it because they've got display block important. And so that would load in, load in the CSS before I could actually apply what I wanted to. So I couldn't hide it. So then I tried to change the color, um, and it would only change the color of the powered by, and then the member space link was underscored and a different color. So I actually had to do that in here. And basically what I did is I changed the color to the same color as my background and then made font size zero. Um, but it was really frustrating. It took me a really long time to figure out how to actually make that work. Um, and I thought for sure their script was going to block this and I was just going to have to contact them and be like, look, I love y'all, but don't brand my website, please. Um, but I was able to hack it, so I didn't have to do that. But that was really kind of irritating. Um, so if you, uh, we have, obviously we have the member space deal in Indie Deals. If you're an Indie Pro member, it's 15% off for life, which is pretty tight. Um, so if you sign up with that and you're like, Corinne, how do I, how do I hide this? I got you. <laughs> so anyway, that's pretty much the gist of what I did this week. Um, I obviously like, I relaunched my Campbell Core points page. Um, which is the one that I already showed you because that was looking different, but that's pretty much all I did on my site. So let's, for the last few minutes, dig into ManyChat because I am stoked on this new thing. I'm so excited about it. Okay. So, um, if I go into my flows, actually, let me go to automation and I'll go to my main menu. Okay, so obviously in the main menu, I've got the Gilded Experience, I've got CC Points, and I've got Play to Win. You can see that CC Points is getting, obviously, the most amount of traffic, uh, which is great. Um, so if we click here, you can see that it goes to the flow. I'm going to zoom in on this as much as I can reasonably. Let me check the layout here. Okay. And you can see it says sent three times, but that's just because um, I've I recently published some changes. So where this is coming in, you can see that it's kind of identifying the sources. Um, you know, one of them is my messenger ref URL, which is on my page. And then I've also let people know if they're like, hey, how do I get more Campbell Core points? You just message as a keyword for CC points. Um, so I always make sure they're subscribed to the bot if they haven't already subscribed. And if, if their point score is less than one, it sends them this like welcome message and is like, Hey, you know, if you want to click here to rack up more points, here you go. So they automatically get a point as soon as they come in. Um, and if they're like, no, it's like, okay, bye. <laughs> So essentially, the actions that I've made, um, and well, actually, let me get into lead scores. Um, if you're interested, do just search ManyChat lead score, and you'll see how to set up lead scoring in ManyChat, right? 
And so that'll give you all the kind of skinny on that. But essentially, you can set up actions in your bot to give them a certain like point, right, when they complete certain things. Now, in a lot of situations, this is used for customer follow up, right? That's why it's called lead score. So essentially, it's like, oh, you're a real estate agent and you want them to do these different things or you are a educator and you want them to do different things like fill out a quiz. And if they fill out that quiz, then, you know, they get these points. So and you know to follow up with them to buy something or whatever. Um, I'm just using it as kind of a engagement reward system. So uh, essentially, there's a custom field that's attached to an audience member and it ticks up every time that they go through one of these steps. So um, the things that I currently have for points, and obviously I don't want this to overlap with my TuneSpeak because first off, TuneSpeak is tracking things that I maybe cannot, um, like Spotify plays, Spotify follows, like I can't do any of that, right? So, um, but what I did do is figure out there are these tags, right? So right now for points, they can basically click on the link for TuneSpeak. That's not trackable, but I'm like, whatever. Um, an Instagram follow, a location grabber, which is the thing that I taught in one of the ground reports. Um, if their email has value, if their phone number has value for SMS, if their stream preference has any value, and um, oh, I've got IG follow in there twice. And if they've signed up for the Gilded experience. So essentially all of this madness is just filtering them through. If they don't have a, one of those tags, it'll send them to the relevant flow, right? So um, if this says, you know, hey, if they haven't signed up for TuneSpeak yet, if they're not tagged that, this is the link and it adds the tag. So if they come back into here, they're tagged TuneSpeak, so they won't get that message again, right? Instead, they'll be sent to the next thing, which is the Gilded Experience, and it goes to the flow for the Gilded Experience sign up. Um, same thing with phone, like this, this is the biggest one, do you want SMS stuff? So it goes to this SMS grabber, so I'll kind of open that for a second. And if they've already opted in for SMS, it says, oh, you've already given me your phone number, your current point score is this, right? If they haven't given it to me, then it says, here you go. So this, and that's it, you know, even though I'm filtering people out when they get into the CC points flow, I expect to send people here in other, from other places in the future. So this just makes sure that nobody's like, you know, just pressing it over and over and like figuring out a way to hack it. Um, and then basically what this does is you can see the action is adding the tag for the thing that they're doing. Now, what I realized is that with lead score, you can't only have them like if they come into the SMS thing and they just enter it and then change it and then enter it and change it. They could get a point every time if you use this action block here to give them a point. So what I realized is that in automation, I could go to rules and actually set up rules to do this. So if I go into the SMS points, as soon as that tag is applied, it's, it increases their score by three and it's only run once per user. So when I figured out that I could do that, I was like, okay, tight. I can have all of this stuff in here and like, it's gonna work. <laughs> and they're not gonna be able to abuse it. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of fun. I built out a whole ton of things. Um, and I'm, I'm really expecting to like right now I only have the one level. Um, I only have this one level. And so what I actually plan on doing is adding a filter here and setting like a level two when they've completed all these things, there's like more advanced stuff, like send me a message with your you know, perfect, um, you know, what your favorite song is, or go here and complete this action, right? Whatever it is, um, stuff that is maybe a little bit more involved. Send me a picture of you with a piece of my merch or, you know, stuff like that. So um, when, and then in theory, level two, level three, level four, right? This is stuff that can get more and more intense, more and more advanced. Um, and I, I'm kind of really excited about it um, because 
basically I'll be able to put a filter here like this total run with a one point for opt-in is 12 points. So if they exceed 12 points, that's when they're going to win like a postcard, right? So I'll set up a flow when they reach 10, 12 points. It's like, hey, you completed level one. I want to send you a postcard and gather their address through many chat so that I can send it to them and be like, you're now at points level two and you there's more advanced things that you've unlocked. And it's fun right like in theory and I want to make all of it like no purchase necessary I definitely don't want to make anything contingent on buying so that's a big thing um but then if they finish level two like they get a t-shirt right if they finish level three then they get a three-piece merch pack or whatever it is and I'm I'm stoked on that and I love sending people free stuff when they are obviously you know trying to do so much to show their support so I'm excited about it, guys. I think it's going to be super fun. Um, so anyway, the only thing I realized is that right now, like, for example, if they go to SMS Grabber, right? They came in from CC points. They go to SMS Grabber, open flow. It doesn't tell them, hey, if you want to find more points, go back again. It doesn't have a button for them to do that. It doesn't tell them how to message me. So... That's the thing that I need to fix um, with all of these steps. But that's easy to do. And I'm going to do that today when we're done. <laughs> so, um, so that's the gist of that. But if you're interested in doing that, I would say get into ManyChat Lead Scoring. Go Google it like I showed you um, and kind of take a look at, you know, the different things that you could incentivize and think about it really creatively, right? Um, even like send a video of you jamming out to one of my songs, right? And, or repost something here or whatever. And especially if your audience is smaller, some of these things, uh, my audience is big enough that it's probably going to take, like, I'm going to hire somebody <laughs> to help me track this. So like for the IG follow, it's like, are you following me on IG um, or you follow me on IG, enter your handle here and we'll verify it. We'll go make sure that that person is following me and then we'll give them the point manually. So I'm going to be having an intern do that for me um, because I'm not going through all that. <laughs> but if your audience is smaller, it's totally reasonable for you to just verify these different actions that they're taking um so that's kind of that's what I would suggest I think it's really cool I think it's a fun little game I think it's a way to get them used to talking to you in Facebook Messenger so that if you do want to run messenger ads or sponsored ads it's really easy to get them to engage there um it also like for the SMS um basically if they opt in for SMS it sends them hey you know thanks so much for you know, the messages, you can reply stop at any time to unsubscribe. Uh, but SMS is like email. You can just send it, right? There's no Facebook terms and conditions. There's no uh, limit to that. You'll just want to make sure you do it smartly so people don't unsubscribe. But you've got direct contact at that point, And that's permission. Even if you don't have their email, that's permission. Um, the cool thing, too, to consider is that if you send out email to your folks, right, and this is a person who has SMS opt-in but not email opt-in, you can grab the link from, the, from MailChimp or whatever provider you're using. They provide a link, and you'll see this anytime someone emails you from a newsletter. You'll usually see at the very top, view this in your browser. Instead of reading it in your email, that link, you could send it to your SMS list. And then they can see the exact same content, click on the exact same things as an email user, so that's one way that you can, you don't have to send them like 500 words in a text and it'll break it up and whatever, you know? So that's kind of the rundown of this past week, guys. I feel like I got a lot done. Um, obviously, there's still a ton to do. <laughs> um, my biggest challenge this coming week, um, I actually need to finish all of my art and everything for um, the greatest hits disc and start sending out those um, those initial pre-orders, which there's 4,200 of them. So 
that's going to be a task. <laughs> uh, I was really actually very surprised um, at the number of pre-orders that I got. Um, so I'm going to be sending those out over the next week or two. Um, they weren't anticipating it till early summer, so I'm, you know, I'm ahead of schedule, but ugh, that's going to be a thing. That's a huge project. Uh, I'm going to check in comments. Um, Uncomely Music has two cats. They're the best, right? And Calligrapher. Calligrapher is so good. Um, okay, Alexander on Facebook says, oh, wow, this is... So this is making it easy for you to create a checklist of actions that represent higher and higher levels of customer intent. Yeah. And then lead customers deeper and deeper into your pipeline. And the score is a way of tracking their overall progress. Exactly. Have you ever looked into materials on gamification, especially when it comes to the development of apps? This reminds me a lot of the concept you're outlining. Yes. And actually, when I said kind of at the beginning of the session uh, of today's episode that I was thinking about creating an app, that's exactly what I want to create in it. I want to make it like a game um, where, you know, they can interact with it and earn merch and uh, just by being engaged online. Um, I don't mind kind of offsetting cost of goods with the fact that they're doing all this work, right? Like, yes, the t-shirt cost me $6.50. Do I want them to buy it for $20? Absolutely. But if they do all of these other things... Have they done more for me than $20 of advertising might do? Possibly, right? Because advocacy is a real thing. It's way more valuable than just seeing an ad and, and doing something, right? Um, people will absolutely, you know, participate in something that their friend is participating in simply because their friend is doing it. So that's where that, you know, it's really going to start encouraging that stuff. And essentially, like what you see in my levels, like everything right in the first level is basically education and permission. So my um, my next one, it's not going to be affirmation because I don't want to make it purchase contingent, but it, as, it is going to be like having them vote on merch, having them talk to me about what merch they want, filling out surveys, doing polls that kind of thing. So it is that merch conversation, even though it's not going to be, you know, making them purchase it because it makes it so organic if they're like, you know, if you're interested, like, hey, I'm interested in, you know, giving you feedback about this merch. It's a very natural conversation to be like, you voted on this. It's for sale now. You interested? And some of them won't be and some of them will be. But it's then it's a conversation that they're a part of, right? And I talked about this a little bit last week is like not just being like, hey, I'm releasing this thing. It's for sale. Go get it. It's more like, hey, help me figure out some fun stuff. And then their ownership in the delivery of that merch is so much higher, right? And so the level after that will probably be more affirmation and um, I'm sorry, ascension, right? The higher level products, getting them to vote on the expensive, cool, limited edition type stuff. And then the level above that is going to be referral and advocacy. So I'm actually following the buddy system as I'm building this out um, to really kind of, you know, be able to measure those actions. And that's why that's why we reference the buddy system every freaking time. <laughs> every time. The buddy system. It's the buddy system. It's the buddy system. <laughs> so that is a wrap for me guys do you have any questions do you have anything you'd like me to expand upon otherwise we all have so many things to do for our music careers today and i don't want to keep you away from it any longer hopefully you found some inspo in this whole thing um you know don't feel like you need to do in a week what i've done in a week right uh, if you have the time, you know, then that's great. But also like these things are, um, kind of second nature to me at this point. Um, and I, you know, there's a few other things I even accomplished this week that are not, um, that I didn't even get into, but like running ads, setting up a lot of this tech stuff, it's all very normal for me. But if any of these ideas inspire you to do something cool, then do it, you know? run with that inspo because um, I really I'd love to see what you're doing especially if you want to build something and bring it next time and you want to show me I'd love to see it you know okay 
So I'm going to wait like 20 seconds to see if anybody wants to ask a question. Also, let me know if you like the pre or post music because um, those are instrumentals from the remix album. So you're getting a little bit of a preview. <laughs> but I, um, I love, yeah, I, I'm so thrilled with what Iggy and Kenny did on the remix album. And if you didn't know that, the remix album, my remix album was produced entirely with Iggy and Kenny. So Kenny, our support specialist, and, and our community manager, I should say, and Iggy, our production concierge. And they're both moving on to bigger and better things as very, very soon, uh, which is very exciting. They're so talented. But, um, but yeah, if you like that music, that's where it came from. And I just wanted you to know. All right. I don't see anything else rolling in. So I am going to drive on with the rest of my Saturday. I hope everyone has a really productive yet wonderful um, wonderful day. I hope this is some inspiration for you. And if you um, do take any action based on anything that you hear in Curran's Corner, please do share it in the Indies groups. Um, you know, let people know what you're doing because I, I want to see all of us kind of up the ante on ourselves, right? And really raise the bar and have other Indies feeling like they need to keep up with you, right? So I'd love to see that. All right. Well, thank you so much, Indies. Have a wonderful Saturday. See you later.